15 years ago we started hatching fertilized eggs to get our new little chickies and we bought a cheap incubator which was absolutely awful. 15 years later we wanted to find out whether things had improved. Welcome to English Country Life. My name is Fiona and together with my amazing husband Hugh, we run this small holding here in Lincolnshire in the UK and we breed Buff Warpington chickens. And part of our journey has been not only using the broody hens to incubate the eggs, we do use formal incubators. And 15 years ago we bought one of those really cheap ones from eBay. And quite frankly, it was awful, but 15 years was a long time ago. Manufacturing's moved on, technology's moved on. So we wanted to see, are they still as bad? Do you need to spend money on a quality brand or can you get away with something like this? So this is what we bought. This is an incubator that we got from Amazon and it says it's got automatic temperature control, automatic turning for the eggs, and humidity control. So we're going to take a closer look at this. Let's have a look at our first impressions of this incubator and quite frankly when it arrived I was really disappointed because the listing on Amazon showed a clear plastic base and that was what I was expecting to see because clear plastic would allow me to check that the eggs are turning properly, any chicks are hatching and there's no problems going on inside. What we actually got is this solid polystyrene which obscures the view inside entirely, but it does have an advantage. It provides a lot of insulation, which cuts down on your power use and means that you don't have to have such a temperature stable environment for the incubator to sit in. So it does have advantages and we could actually remove it. We can either permanently remove it using a knife or we'd have to take the motor off the side to do that. Let's have a look inside. If the sound of polystyrene being rubbed makes you go, Look away now and close your ears. There you go, that's that sound. Now that's a good sound in this respect because it means that the lid fits very, very tightly on the base. And that means you're going to have less temperature loss, you're going to have less humidity loss, and you do need that humidity. The humidity is going to stop your chicks from adhering to the inside of the egg. And the other thing you need to make that happen are to have the eggs turned on a regular basis. And on the inside of the incubator, you've got five rollers, and that allows you to put four rows of eggs in. And those rollers actually do turn your eggs. And how does it work? Well, the Rollers have cogs on the end and those cogs sit in that long yellow worm screw and the worm screw is turned by the motor which sits on the side of the incubator but you do have to plug it in and you do that with this wire lead that you can see and that plugs into a connector in the roof and that's going to turn your eggs no problem at all but we were disappointed with two big things in here and one of them is a major concern for us. The first is that there is an exposed screw end coming through into the incubator. That is a pointy end which could really hurt any chick which has just been hatched out of the eggs. Now if you think about it, chicks don't have use of their, egg, their legs when they first come out of the egg. They're flopping around. They don't know how to use the legs properly. They can't stand. They're very, very uncoordinated. And if they fall against that pointy, sharp screw end, that could be catastrophic. It could be absolutely awful. And the other thing we were disappointed with was actually if there's a manufacturing issue with these rollers with these cogs on the end we did find that one of these popped out of the worm screw on a regular basis and that's because there was a manufacturing defect only a small one but there was a manufacturing defect on the end of this roller and that was enough to get it to actually pop out of the worm screw and that means the eggs aren't going to turn. And if we kept this polystyrene outer on, we're not going to see that happen, which means that when we get to hatching, we're going to have all sorts of problems. And underneath the rollers, you've got this hatching mat. Now, when you get to day 19, what you're needing to do is preparing for hatch. So the eggs need to be stopped turning. You take the rollers out and you put this in. 
Now there's a few things about this hatching mat which bother me. The first thing is that the holes are actually really quite large. If you've got tiny bantams, their feet can actually get caught through these holes because the idea of the hatching mat is it gives the chicks who've just got out of the egg when they're really uncoordinated, it gives them something to grip to help them get use of their legs and start to stand for the first time. But bantam's feet are gonna go straight through these holes. Now, even if you've got large fowl whose feet aren't gonna go through the holes, there is one big hole here for the electrical lead to the motor to come through. And this is something Hugh and I have discussed quite a lot because we're not really sure what to do with this. And um, what we mean by that is if we keep it coming through this hole, it provides a trip hazard for the chicks, which actually can be a big problem for them. Or if you actually have the lead in the bottom of the incubator, you're essentially having it sat in water because that's where your water reservoir is for your humidity. And that's gonna limit how many times you can actually use this incubator going forward because electrical leads which get wet are gonna be a bit of a problem. So you might be able to dry it out once or twice or three times or maybe a few times more, but it's going to cause corrosion and problems going forward. Now the good news is that the power is actually in the lid, not in the motor. So there will be no power going through this once you've disconnected it. And if you do decide to stick it in the water reservoir rather than have it as a trip hazard, it might be the way forward. But it's a really difficult one. Now the other problem that I've got with this hatching mat is that it doesn't cover the entire base of the incubator. So it would leave your worm screw trough completely exposed. And you have disconnected the worm screw because you don't want that turning. Because think about it, if an uncoordinated chick comes out the egg, goes over the edge into the trough, if that worm screw is turning, it's gonna be catastrophic. I'm not even gonna think about the injuries that could happen. But even if it's not turning, the chick is uncoordinated, it's fallen in the trough, it's gonna be really distressing. And if we haven't chosen to take this polystyrene outer off the actual incubator itself. We're not gonna be able to see that that's happened. We're not gonna be able to rescue that chick. So do we take the polystyrene outer off, which might compromise how stable the temperature is inside the incubator? Or do we leave it on and then wait to hear the cries of the chicks who are distressed in the trough? It raises all sorts of questions. And I've got some problems with this incubator. Let's have a look at humidity. Humidity control happens with three items in this incubator. You've got this grey pod that connects via a pipe to the inside of the incubator and you've got these bottles with a sprayer. So let's look at the pod first. This is your main humidity control and the idea is you'd fill this bottle of water which you have to provide yourself but look at it it's an old bottle. You turn it upside down and put it into the pod. Can you see the problem there? turning a full bottle of water upside down into a pod, water's gonna go everywhere. So you need to make sure that's in a bowl to catch any water, which actually splashes everywhere. When that water then is upside down, it sends it through this pipe into a trough on the inside of the incubator. But we found that the pipe which came with the incubator was kinked, it was damaged in transport. So we did have some real problems actually making it work because it's really important that that pipe is below the level of the trough. Otherwise that gravity feed doesn't work. If it's slightly higher, you're gonna get no water flowing through. And that will keep your incubator at roughly a 60% humidity level for the incubation process. And we did test it, it is 60%. That's too high. Now you need the humidity, there's lots of contention that has to be said about humidity levels for the main incubation process. And some books say 45%, some books say 55%, but no one says 60 because 60 is too high, it won't allow an air sac on the inside of the egg to develop and that air sac is what your chicks need to break into to breathe to be able to actually hatch and get out of the egg. If the air sac's too small, they'll suffocate inside the egg. So 60% is too high. It is a problem for us. 
The idea is for day 19 to 21 for hatching, you would then use this bottle here. You fill it with water and you put it in a second port in the side and you inject water into a second trough and that raises the humidity for hatching. Now your air sac will have developed by that point so what you're trying to do from day 19 to 21 is keep the humidity high so that the chick is mobile on the inside of the egg. They've got a really moist environment so they're not sticking to the inside membrane so that they can move around and hatch. It also then goes a step further and says fill this sprayer with water and every few hours take the lid off the incubator and spray the eggs because don't forget eggshells are porous and that adds extra moisture. Big problem with that. Day 19 to day 21 for hatching is always called lockdown and it's called lockdown for a reason because you need a consistent temperature, you need a consistent humidity. Every time that lid comes off the incubator, your humidity drops, your temperature drops, it is a problem. So you should never, ever, ever take a lid off an incubator during that time process. So for us, humidity control is not control. Humidity runs far too high and it is a big problem. We would get incredibly low hatch rates with this incubator. Capacity is worth mentioning, so you've got five rollers, you can fit in 16 chicken eggs, so four rows of four. And you can actually move the rollers closer together if you want to incubate quail eggs, but you've still only got five rollers, so even though you can move them closer together, you're still only going to have four rows of eggs. And that works for days 1 to 18, where you're automatically turning the eggs. Once you get into lockdown, that day 19 to 21, you need to put the eggs on the hatching mat. Now, because the hatching mat doesn't stretch across the entire base of the incubator, if you do put 16 chicken eggs in, it's a very, very close, tight fit. It's very, very crowded. So once your chicks start to hatch and need to actually get out of the eggs, that's very difficult for them to do. And once they are out, there's not a lot of space for them to move around, which makes it more likely that they're going to fall into that trough where the worm screw is that we spoke about earlier as being a problem. It's worth having a look at the lid. First thing to see is there's got a candle on top. Now that's really quite advantageous and it does work very, very well. It allows you to shine a bright light through your eggs so you can check that the eggs are developing properly. It's also got a 12 volt lead, which allows you, instead of connecting it to the mains, you can attach it to a 12 volt battery. Now ideally what we would have expected would have been a cigarette lighter fitting on the end. So you just plug it in and it would work. But what it actually comes with instead is two crocodile clips. So you would need a battery and then to connect these crocodile clips to their exposed battery terminals, which personally I don't think is ideal. The other thing to note about the lid is that these screws here, which cover the, which is for the cover for the fan, are actually damaged. And that means you can never take that cover off to clean the fan on the inside. Now cleaning the fan for any incubator we think is really, really important because when your chicks hatch, they're letting off small amounts of fluff from their down feathers. That fluff builds up and it creates really quite hard crust on the fans. If you can't clean it off, what's going to happen is that biological material is going to start to break down as soon as you put this away for storage and that's going to grow bacteria. So next time you use it, when that fan starts to whir, it's going to actually send off that bacteria into your incubator and your eggshells are porous, bacteria is going to infect the inside of your eggs and you will get a lower hatch rate. So not being able to clean the fan is a problem for us and actually we really don't like that aspect. Let's have a very quick summary. So everyone's looking for good hatch rates from their incubator. And to get a good hatch rate, you need five aspects. You need your eggs to be turned. You need stable temperature control. You need good humidity control. You need great hygiene control on the inside. And you need good visibility so you can spot any problems before it happens. Now this incubator fails to deliver on four of those five aspects. Now to be fair, it does have good temperature control, but the only reason it can deliver a good temperature control is because this polystyrene styrene outer which compromises your visibility as soon as you take that outer off your temperature control isn't as good by any stretch of the imagination so it fails to deliver our advice is 
by a quality brand. We would never stock this cheap incubator in our UK online poultry equipment store. We only stock Brinsey because it delivers all five of those aspects, not just one. Now, if you found this information in this video useful, take a moment and give us a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll get notified every time a brand new video goes live. If you've got any questions on this video or an idea for a new video, pop it in the comment section and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.